Okay, what 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 time? Oh. We're on, are we? Recording? From New York and Los Angeles, it's a journey through photography. I'm Mark Skinner. I'm here with Ken Nelson and Greg Clayhorn. Today we're talking prime time. Hey everyone, <laughs> journey through photography, and I'm Mark Skinner. We're here with Ken Nelson and Greg Clayhorn, and we're talking about prime time, which would be when's the best time to use a prime lens. Uh, a lot of people these days use zoom lenses for a variety of reasons. You, wait, you, you said grow. announcer's voice. That sounded a whole lot more fun. Then you went like to the graveyard, man. Where are you going to be talking to Come on, I'll put some life in it. <laughs> if you can put up that, uh, that first. He's ignoring me. This is a, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just, I'm just, go, just going through what I, what I got to do. I got, I got business. Uh, Care. It's a lens, you know. It's not. It's not rocket science. It's a lens. So the first, when we we first had our first video camera, we would usually not a compact or a or a cell phone or anything like that. There's usually a prime lens that comes with it. It's usually not one of these. It's usually something with a shorter focal length, like a like a 50 or a 45 or a 40, and uh, you you work with that until you find that it just doesn't have enough reach. Or it does, or it has too much reach, and you need to get a wider uh, uh, view. And uh, this particular prime lens, uh, you, you find yourself wanting to purchase another lens. When we were young, it used to be, well, I have a 50 millimeter lens on my camera. I better buy a 135. Did, did you, know, you explain that what was a prime the lens telephoto is? that was the next up in the time. Did and a prime lens is a photograph with a single focal length. And uh, that single focal length is what you have to work with. And if you want to get closer, you've got to move closer. If you want to get further away, you've got to move further away from your subject to get your, your, uh, your photograph. Uh, I found that this 85 millimeter lens, which I used for years, uh, in, in the 19 late 1920s? 80s, and early, and the early 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 90s and early late 80s, late 80s, Before early World 90s, War II. was really really good uh, because it helped train my eye, uh, and because it compacted the the uh, depth of field, uh, it gave us it gave me the opportunity to to compose much more easily than say a wide angle lens. Using a wide angle lens is a little more difficult to compose a good photograph because you have that much more area to organize in your field of view. Uh, so you'll find that a lot of people use longer lenses and the, the, the proximity that is uh, displayed in your image uh, between the subject and the viewer uh, helps you uh, it, it gives you more impacts. A lot of times it's a longer lens and people think, oh my goodness, this is, this is great. But I've, but I've gone off on a little bit of a tangent. If you go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. No, I wouldn't say usual. Um, Those aren't lenses. I, I created this uh, slide to show what that field of view would be with the same lens, which would be the 85 millimeter prime, prime lens that you saw, saw there. And then with, compared to a zoom lens, and the particular zoom lens I used was a, a 70 to 300. Most pe people use a 70 to 200 uh, because it's a little faster. And by faster, I mean it has a, a, a full f-stop of 2.8. This particular lens has an f-stop of 4 slash 5, 6, 3, which means as you go from 70 millimeters, it's F4 is the widest open lenses. And when you get to 300, it goes all the way down to uh, so five. We're, we're, we're talking about prime lenses, though, aren't we? Yes, we are. And the, so, the reason why I put this here is because right in the middle, you see what 85 millimeter uh, equipment looks like. And it's right in the, not quite in the middle, but it's a little closer to the, to the, shorter range of a, of a zoom lens, even with a 70 to 200, which is more uh, more common. And I have one of those too, but this was the longest. So I wanted to show you the, the extremes. Uh, the, the good thing about uh, prime lens is one, it's usually faster, which means you can get more light into it and you can get 
photographs in lower light. Number two, um, you're consistent. With a zoom lens, you, you have a tendency to sort of, uh, if you use them a lot, move your focal length around a lot just to accommodate uh, uh, the subject in the frame. And by doing that, you're, you're changing your composition, not just in how much area is there, but you're also compressing the, 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 the image a little bit. And so uh, things look a little flatter, as you can see far on the far right. At 300 millimeters, the, it's the same lamp that I'm photographing, but it looks like it's much flatter in that, in that photograph. So, much flatter than what? I don't, I don't, well, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, go ahead. There, it looks like it's much flatter uh, from the front, from the foreground to the uh, background. And uh, even though it's a smaller area, it just has an overall flatter effect. And that's good, but if you use a prime lens in the beginning and use that lens until you need to get another lens, I would recommend maybe buying two, maybe three prime lenses of different focal lengths and really learn those lenses first. And then when you have the need, then I would go to buying a uh, zoom lens with the uh, focal lengths that you are familiar with already. And then you know when to zoom in, when to zoom out, and you'll, you'll know exactly what to do. I mean, with, 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 I would say with little exception, but I mean, doesn't the, uh, the zoom lens essentially, I mean, other than, you know, bringing the subject closer, which is always a, um, uh, thing that's good. What is that word? <laughs> an <laughs> advantage. Or, it, it is an advantage but, to no, bring no, no, closer. But there's also, there's also the, the, uh, um, I mean, in certain types of photography that zoom is, powerful it's necessary oh sure but if you're photographing sports you, you can't get away from from using zoom yes yeah but i mean essentially you're 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 you're, you're cropping through the camera yep okay. and you're letting in less light well i mean now that that's almost a moot point with with uh digital photography where you can you know adjust on the fly you can do you know um, hdr images so one of them is going to be close to close to spot on well, you have the time, you know, here's the thing you've got, I mean, you've got a point that with digital photography, you can adjust it and you can also use auto ISO, but then you have to deal with how much noise gets into the original image. And there are a lot of There's factors. Noise reduction. Well, yeah, but so well, are you, are you saying you're really, for or against prime lenses? Cause you, you're touching. I'm very much for using prime lenses in the beginning of your career. Believe it or not, I'm very much for using prime uh, lenses when you know exactly what What's your doing? vision is. I mean, we mentioned Ralph Gibson last week briefly, but Ralph Gibson only uses the 50 millimeter lens in his photography. And he does so because that is his particular choice of field of view. And, you know, the, the zoom lenses, uh, they afford you the ability to go further and, and you know, get back and forth without moving. But I think if you really learn to master one particular prime lens of any particular, it doesn't matter, whatever that focal length is, I think you can kind of uh, develop that into your style. Uh, sure. And lots of, I mean, Ralph Gibson's the only one I remember off the top of my head, but a lot of people do that and you know it's their photograph because maybe they always use a 35 millimeter lens or they always use a 90 millimeter lens and and, and that's part okay. of defining that's defining your vision you know there's a particular there, there, was a, there was a whole school of thought when zoom lenses came out that it was like a, kind of a lazy man's photography that you is know, true was, uh, was it uh kappa that said you know if the picture's not good you're not close enough you know, that is that true, I, but but you know, but at the same best time, zoom is your feet, <laughs> right? But the yeah, it is you're absolutely right. But there is a point where, for economic reasons, you you really do need to have a zoom lens in order to, you know, get the shot because okay. you're fast. 
but you're not fast enough to get 15 feet closer. You know, right. if you're photographing- well, I, was, I was under the impression because you said prime you, you, time. I thought it was gonna be all about prime lenses. So go ahead. Well, what I'm talking about is when's the proper time to use a prime. And, and the, the proper time to use a prime lens is uh, really when you're in the beginning of your career, when you really don't know what focal lengths to do. What? And then at the point of your career where you're really choosing a vision to create a style. And those are the two times I think are the best times to use a prime lens. Mm, I don't know about that. I mean, because look at look at all the, uh, I mean, Kenny, I'm surprised Kenny isn't jumping in there too, because, um, you know, a lot of the, uh, the Leica family, you know, they're, they're, they have one lens on that thing and they work it, you know, and they get great shots, you know, with the prime. You know, they, they don't fudge with this, they don't fudge with that. What do you think, Ken? You're awfully quiet. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because I just want to let you guys get through with what you're, what you're yeah, talking I'm, about. You're part of the conversation. Yeah, I am, and I just, I tend not to, not to necessarily agree that I, there's a good or bad time to use a zoom lens or a prime. Uh, I think that's a matter of personal choice and and technical capabilities. Uh, so if you are if you use uh, a large format camera, uh, there's no such thing as a zoom lens on a four by five or eight by ten camera. They're all primes. You will not find one. Uh, so that's a technical inability uh, when you do it that way. Uh, and I, I tend to agree that a zoom is a lazy man's camera or a lazy man's uh, a piece of equipment, but that doesn't make you a bad photographer. It just makes you want to find the quickest way or the quickest point between A and B. And I, I don't hold that against anybody. Uh, and of course, when I first started out, um, yeah, I actually didn't use a prime. I use a zoom lens. Uh, and uh, to to my uh, to my luck it, it turned out good but um, again that was in my early part of my years and uh, the the technical things about against using a zoom lens wasn't that it was lazy was because it wasn't technically as as good as a prime lens in terms of uh, uh, f-stop uh, capability and so uh, most early lenses during the 80s and in 70s and 80s were variable f-stop lenses so when you were at your widest opening, it was at its widest f-stop. But once you zoomed in to its moderate speed, that means that f-stop like wasn't effective down. anymore. Yeah. It was actually smaller. So right. you, yeah. So that was the reason why I remember uh, the technical capabilities of zoom lenses were not equivalent to a prime lens. Right. But but to get back to what you were saying in the beginning, if you're choosing a large format camera. And you're choosing, say, a 210 lens as your lens of choice, right? As opposed to a 300 millimeter lens, mm -hmm. you're making a conscious decision that that particular field of view uh, is part of the way you photograph subjects. Um, now, if you're in a commercial setting, you have a variety of 150, a 210, and a 300. But if you're really seriously talking about developing your photographic vision, ultimately you start selecting very specific tools to work with and very specific processes to uh, apply to your art. And this is your vision. Yeah, I, I would I would agree with that on if you, well, I in, in small camera photography, you will get uh, lenses that are okay to use for the type of, uh, uh, film aspect ratio that you're using. Uh, so say for instance, right, you, they're not going to give you a uh, 900 millimeter lens on a 35 millimeter camera. It's just not really going to be that great. You know, it's going to be a, yeah, I think the longest uh, focal length you'll probably find on a 35 is maybe a 600. I don't know if you'll find anything longer than that. Millimeter, I think in terms of the uh, because technically, the circle, the, the circle the of uh, the 400, 600? I think the right. circle of di the diameter of the uh, lens opening is not going to it's 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 not going to be effective. But that's okay, getting on, that's getting off the story. Yeah, yeah, way off, way off. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Anyway, all right. Uh, so are we moving on or what? Yeah. Okay. Is it is it me next? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Cool. So, 
So uh, I'll I'll share this with you. Uh, Mark uh, spoke about an 85, uh, and when he was speaking about it, he was speaking about its relative value on a small camera such as a 35 millimeter uh, Actually, camera. Uh, to be honest, the images I showed were for an APS-C sensor. So there you go. Go so it was in essence, it was even smaller than a 35 millimeter. Right, it's an equivalent to a 105 on a, on a yeah. APS-C. Right. Yeah. So in the 35 essence, millimeter, it was 85. Go ahead. Right. So if you were to take that 85 that he talked about and then uh, compare it to this 80, but put it on a different film size uh, camera, you get different results. So his 85 on a 105. Uh, I'm sorry, on an APS is equivalent to, I'm just sorry, this is going to get a little technical, but don't worry about yeah. it. It's going to be simple. Okay, explain it's going to be long. What APS is. Explain the folks. What Advanced APS photo is. system is what the film size was. It's called Advantix. And I think Kodak created it maybe 30 years ago at this point. Okay. And when so when they were making that? the... Yeah, that's the APS, is Advanced Photo System from Kodak. And so when they started creating the sensors for digital cameras, it was much easier to make smaller wafers than larger ones for the 35 millimeter format. And so the most, the, the largest, uh, you know, economically viable and image acceptable sensor was that APS in a standard size was APS uh, dash C. And uh, okay. that's ahead, why. How many of those cameras were made with that sensor size? So basically what I'm getting at is, um, an eight, let's just take an 85. If you were to take an 80, that 85 millimeter lens, put it on a 35 millimeter camera, you'd get a moderate telephoto, uh, what's considered a telephoto. You take that same 85 and put it on what's called a medium format uh, camera, it becomes a wide angle lens. <laughs> so I just wanted you to get that in. Uh, Go, go into your, uh, if you find a reference uh, online uh, to tell you the comparative oh. differences between well, an 85 and a When you say medium like, format, are you, talking, are you talking about a 6x7, 6x9, 6x6? 6x7, 6x9, yes. Mm -hmm. Or 6x45. Well, no, still, because on the digital medium format cameras, it's still a slight tele. Still a normal on a... Um, on a medium now would be a 65 that would be a that would be 65 millimeter on a on a on say a, a fujifilm or a hasselblad or even the pentax medium format cameras all righty okay uh well okay uh still so slightly just, yeah i didn't want ahead. to get into too, too much ahead, into technical Jerry. i just wanted to get into visual visualization um so i, I didn't want to get too technical um, so Do let's like say this 85 millimeter cam, 85 millimeter lens. I just want to show you the the, the angle of acceptance for it. Uh, so if you were to take this right, this image, and uh, now this image, I'm uh, I'm really basically standing on top of these people, or these people are within uh, two to three meters of me. All right. So the angle of acceptance is pretty wide. Right. So that means that I'm, what I'm looking at is a wide field of view. Uh, so the person in the middle is about maybe uh, three meters from me, if not less. And the angle, uh, what you're seeing from left to right, is maybe about eight feet wide. All right. Is that so a that's square what you're, that's, format. Pardon? Is that a square format, or you shot that with your? Uh, I'm sorry. I let Leica. me. I think I I I. Uh, I'm sorry. That's actually more of what you're seeing. So okay. it's it's a, it's a format. So. It's, right? All right, so that's what you're seeing with an 80 millimeter lens on a medium format six by seven camera. All right, and so what I'm trying to get at is that for the most part, this type of lens is really optimized for working close if you're photographing something small or photographing people. Um, and if you are not photographing people and photographing something different, the only other thing that it's really optimal for is landscape. <laughs> All right. So or yeah, city that's, state. that's an art in itself, though. Go ahead. All right. So when when you when you choose a lens or when you're when you're given a lens for or when you buy a lens and you're uh, used to using only one lens, I brought I use only one lens for economical reasons. I couldn't afford to buy multiple lenses. So therefore, I was restricted to this particular lens, which was a standard lens uh, sold for this camera. 
and the lens is um, for this type of uh, camera, it was considered a wide angle. And so what you did was you accepted that angle of view and you photographed accordingly to give you what you perceived artistically or aesthetically uh, to be pleasing for your eye. And this is what I did. So again, I was restricted with, from my own sake. I was restricted to two options, either photograph within a, a set distance if I'm photographing a person or photograph anything that's further away as a distance for landscape or cityscape. That's all I got there. Any questions, yeah, thoughts, that, ideas? That's cool. I love it. I love those images. I, you know, it, it, you know, it, like you said, if if you were to put that same lens on a thirty-five millimeter, it would be a slight. It would be a slight telephoto, and because you were using a six centimeter by seven centimeter negative, because these are scan negatives, it uh, it it translates to a slight wide angle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, my turn. <laughs> um, I, uh, yay, yay, yay. You know, you guys, I love you guys to death. I know we, we, we've uh, been through a lot of years, a lot of imagery and such like that. But um, I don't know. I seem to remember back at uh, at good old PI in Brooklyn, Pratt. They, uh, there was the thing of, um, you know, they said, you know, start off with the 50 millimeter lens because that's about that approximates what, what the eye sees, you know. Even though you know your vision with binocular vision, you're they're out like around 120, 130 degrees of uh, vision. And um, actually, what they found was the 58 millimeter was actually the accurate. Whatever. My turn. Push. I guess so. We got the. You know, <laughs> what I what I I mean I got I got uh, that as a training. But uh, what I liked, you know, as far as primes go, uh, 50 was fine. But for me, it didn't didn't allow me, you know, the field of view that I really, really, really enjoy. So for me, uh, if I were to go prime, I would go for something like a, an aspherical 14 millimeter and a fast lens, 2.8 or smaller. You know, I know we start getting into you know some some nice pricey numbers, but uh, a nice fast uh, 1.2 if I could find it. You know, it costs a few thousand, I'm sure. But I could live with a 2.8. I don't. Uh, flat, like when I uh, a spherical, like a, it's flat edge to edge. I'm sure you've seen uh, those images where the people on the edge of the frame are leaning out because of the, mm -hmm. the lens doesn't keep the whole image flat from edge to edge. Now, um, for me, I think it is a major, major, major stepping stone and a training tool for, um, you know, any photographer, especially young photographers, for um, if nothing else, for composition. Because if you go to, uh, you know, you look at, um, I mean, the uh, training was classical. So we looked at a lot of paintings and such. Now, let's say you just happen to, you know, strip up a, uh, you know, a three foot by four foot canvas. You know, you didn't start cropping in on the canvas necessarily. You have to plan out the whole image and to train your eye to see in a wide angle format and capture, you know, have something going on everywhere in the image is a good training tool because the wide angle for me it really works it trains your eyes it's a good way to get the big picture yeah but that that's kind of a simplistic you know the big picture what does that mean you know there's there's the like entire uh, scene work everything out get the composition down like what you have a you have a uh, uh an image in mind well the one that kenneth just showed was an example of getting the whole picture. Got the he's got the banister. He's got the people leaning on the banister. He's got the El Dorado in the back. He's got the pond. He's got the trees. Oh, that the yeah the uh, hunk of cement, the bridge. Right. Okay. Yeah, but it, it makes you it makes you really really concentrate on uh, you know uh, composition and. Um, activity and peak action and a lot of things going on in the image that, um, you know, I mean, sometimes you, you don't always hit it, you know, but a lot of times you can, you know, nail it. And once you start seeing things in a full frame like that, then you can start, you know, saying, uh, well, okay, this, that's not what I want. I need just this part of it. So then you crop in or whatever you focus over there. Or um, sometimes you'll get three different images, you know, something going on in, in, on the right side of the frame, something going on on the left. And they'll stand independently. And when you when you're practiced and you you try to use that camera, I mean, excuse me, use that 
that that lens and the, the attributes that it has that wideness and compose and fill the frame it, it becomes for me it's a, it's a richer image you know um and a faster lens you could do all sorts of things at all times of nights and now all time of day or night and they are astral photography etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah, and I, uh, I, I agree with you. It's a it's a it's a really good way to work to get a wide angle lens to get all of that information and work with that composition till you really understand it. I get it. Okay, cool. Glad you get. Um, and like this, you know, I mean, it's uh, for me, it's like you know, you get leading lines. You know, this could have been I could have just zoomed in on on the surfer, but you know, I want to get a sense of the the power of the wave. You know, he's riding this this thing that's like tons, tons and tons of water, and he's made a recreation out of it, you know, and then uh, um, just having it wide like that so it allows the eye to go into the image and kind of linger around in there and just see what, what, all, what all is there. And then um, like that discussion we had last week where, where you uh, kind of get an idea for, of, uh, you know, what the photographer was thinking when he shot it. You know, I mean, if you want to take it that far or just I just like being able to, you know, like a good movie, you know, right. they'll, they'll drop you into a situation and you're trying to figure it out. And it might be, you know, the first, you know, five, the hook part of the movie, the first, you know, two minutes, two or three minutes would be the tease that kind of, you know, drop you in this, you know, dark and stormy night, forgive me. <laughs> and you're trying to figure out what's going on. Then, bam, something happens. And then you're into the movie. You know, you're emotionally you know, tied to it. So um, I feel May like I wide, angle, a like wide angle does that for me. Go ahead. May I ask what focal length was used for this oh, surface? Here photo? we go. Does it matter? Does In it some matter? regard, it does. Sometimes it does. Yeah. I, I just wanted to know. I was just wondering. Oh, well, that's what, that was with my wide angle. That's with um, uh, 24 millimeter. Okay. Well, well that explains that the man. sharpness all the way through the time. Well, that that's another well, thing. Well, that, that was the other thing that uh, that we that that they wider say, lenses you know, tend to have a bro have a deeper depth of field. So you're but but by intention, they, you can also have a but because you have because the speed of the lens, you know, I get a kick out of getting close on stuff and closing it all the way down, open. Excuse me, opening it all the way open. And having a yeah. very shallow depth of field and, you know, whatever's right. right up there is sharp focus and then it falls off very quickly. Right, but it's much I more difficult kick out of that. wide angle lens than a, than a but longer But also, That's what, I was what, what, what was the, uh, what the other thing is that you, uh, the, an exercise that, uh, um, you know, we, we, we uh, well, I, at least I, I enjoyed it at school was the, um, you know, F16, you know, so that you have, you know, like a super, it's already super wide. So you're going to get a lot of information, but then you uh, shut it down to like F16, where your depth of field is, you know, basically in front of the lens to infinity. And it, it gives you all kinds of stuff. You know, you can, you can essentially just shoot, you know, almost anything from the hip and not really have to worry about, you know, what's going to be in focus because everything's going to be in focus. Then that kind of for it, me, for me, <laughs> and I guess you guys, I'm kind of wound up because this is one of my favorites. When you when you when you stop thinking about the mechanical parts of it, and you can start thinking more about the creative parts of it, you know, like light and shadow, colors, you know, where where that motion through the frame is going to be, and the moment that you choose to to to, to fire the shutter, it becomes a whole different world of composition, action, you know placement, you know, mise and scene or, or adjusting, you know, things that are in the frame, you know, um, peak action, emotion, you know, all of those, all of those uh, elements, I think they're, they're uh, major. And I get a kick out of, uh, as far as primes go, prime time, prime time for me, prime time is very important for uh, composition. And, and uh, like you're saying, um, finding your own visual language. You know, prime might not be for you. That's fine. But I would say take the prime challenge and try going out and shooting with nothing but the, uh, you know, a wide angle and uh, understand the lesson that it will teach you. I think that's big. That's all I got. You got anything, fellas? That's it. 
No, no, no. Short and sweet. All right. Well, this has been a journey through photography. I've been Mark Skinner. I still am. I'm here with Kenneth Nelson and Greg. Can you tell the people what they should be doing between now and the next show? Keep shooting. Bop, bop, bop. That's right. Keep on shooting. Good night, everyone. <laughs>